up today? It's Dr. Adishina from ftplecture.com. Today I want to talk about money. That's one of the very few topics that families don't talk about at the dinner table. Nobody ever talks about financial planning. Nobody tells you about money, how to handle money. Now, they don't teach, if they don't teach it in schools, right? You go to college, you go to high school, you go to graduate school. They don't teach you about it, okay? Okay, let's see what's working, we learn it. Um, let's try church or a mosque or, you know, religious houses. Oh, no, they don't teach you about that in church or mosque or religious okay. houses. Okay. All right, let's see. Maybe my friends. Oh, guess what? Your friends are not going to teach you either. That's a very, very unfortunate thing. So we all grow up. We know what money is. But we never have enough of it, right? Isn't that true? You wonder, you're always broke, you never have enough, all right? Well, it's not your fault, but it's also your fault. It's not your fault because when you were born, you were never given the insight to respect money. That's the problem. The respect for the currency itself was not taught to you. And then, over the course of your lifetime, nobody sits you down to teach you how to start to financially manage your life. Well, when you're young, obviously, you know, there's more priorities other than thinking about money. But as soon as you reach age 18 and 19 and 20s, now you're going to your teenage years. Now, that teenage is a very, very crucial time in your life that the mistakes that you make uh, could be either good uh, can be even really detrimental, I meant to mean, to your future earnings or to even to your future financial life. So today I'm going to give you some few basic tips that I have learned on my own and give you some recommendations on books that you can pick up and read about uh, and that can help you start to develop some self-discipline and respect financial obligations. The first thing you need to know is what are my needs versus wants. Okay? Now, this is a very, very important concept because think about this. People don't know the difference between a need and a want. Now, what's a need? Now, to me, a need is something I cannot live without. What's that? Food. Wow, that's important. So, I'll put that. So, I need to eat food, I need to drink water, H2O, right? Going back a little chemistry in there. I need shelter, and I need to wear clothes. Because if I don't eat, I can't function. If I don't have a place to sleep at night, the weather is bad enough, I can't live outside, and I have to clothe myself. So these three basic things are very, very crucial to survival. Now, let's look at things that people want. The list goes on forever. Let's say people want a big house, right? Oh, actually, before we move to wants, education is a need. Because the more educated you are, the more you can make better decisions, the better you can get a better job, right? the more you can be able to sustain your family with your financial income. People want a big house, they want a car, they want a flat screen TV, let's see, they want a lot of shoes, now they want so many clothes, more than they ever need, right? They want jewelry, right? They want jewelry, they want, wait a minute, we can keep going on and on, wow. They want, they want an iPad, an iPhone, and a Samsung, name it, every single gadget, a PS3, Xbox, uh, the latest shoe, designer shirt. We can go on and on and on about things people want. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting this thing, but the problem is you got to know what the difference between your needs and your wants are. Now, if you know the difference between your needs and your wants, you will always focus to get your needs first 
rather than your wants. The problem is people spend all their earnings on wants. That's bad, okay? So the first thing you need to know is once you know what your needs are, you will always give yourself this check, this subconscious check like, I'm, going, I'm at the mall right now and I wanna buy 10 clothes. And you say to yourself, do I need these clothes or I just want them because they look nice and I wanna be part of the Joneses, keeping up with the Joneses. Now once you do that, my second advice is save 10% of your income. So what? 10% means if you earn $20, okay, you save $2 a month in a savings account. Now you might say, oh, you know, I don't make a lot of money. I don't have any money. You know, I pay cell phone bills. I pay electric bills. I pay water bills. I pay rent. I pay this. But you know what's fascinating? I walk around and I notice people that's complain like this, if you go to their houses most of the time, not all the time, so this doesn't apply to everyone, just a caveat, that they can actually afford an iPhone or the latest gadget or very fancy shoes. And I say, well, those are your wants. Remember rule number one, you bought a lot of wants with your money, which is fine to make yourself feel good, but the problem is you did not focus on your needs. If you save 10% of your income, over a long period of time, you develop a saving habit. Now, what is the point of saving? Well, people don't think about emergencies, right? And that's the thing that bothers me because you should be worried too. There will always be an emergency that you will need some cash or some form of equity to pay for. And if you don't save for those raining days, you're gonna have to go borrow at high interest rates. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So what I wanna do is, well, people say I can save 10% of my income, and I said that's true. Why don't you start with 1% of your income? Okay, so if you make $200, let's assume, that's just, and you want to save 1%, you save $2 of $200. Now, it might sound like, ah, oh, $2, two dollars, that's it? Yeah, it might not sound like a lot, but if you start to save $2, okay, every two weeks, over the course of a year, right, even if you're saving $4 a month times 12, you have saved $48. Now, let me give you a perfect example. Let's say your car runs out of gas December 31 and you have not received your paycheck yet and your car runs out of gas. Wouldn't it be nice to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I have $48 left in my savings account. Let me go take $30 or $20 and fill up my gas. That might sound like a simple emergency, but that will have saved you time, energy, effort, just because you save $2 every two weeks. Now, everybody makes different kind of income, but the bottom line is it's the same thing that applies to everyone. So start saving. Now, what, what, what I want you to do is, once you save 1% of your income, I want you to start living off 99% of what's left. See how you do with 99% of your income, and as you get comfortable, save 2%. Increase this to 2%, and live on 98%, until you reach that 10% mark, because someday you will need that money, and it will really come in handy. That's rule number two. Rule number three, that will help you start to financially manage your life is to start to itemize and see where all your money is going. So let's see. I call them liabilities and assets. Okay? So liabilities and assets. What is liability? Liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket like buying a car that you cannot afford, buying a bigger house that you can afford, buying a big flat screen TV because it's Black Friday, yay! But wait a minute, 
I put it on my credit card and I'm broke. And I don't have enough money in my ba bank account. But hey, let, wait a minute. I'm saving money because it's Black Friday. Bad idea. Resist the temptation. So anything that takes money out of your pocket, that's a liability. Now, assets is anything that puts money in your pocket. Now, there's different kinds of assets. Okay, people have retirement accounts called Roth IRAs or 401ks. Okay, that's something over that you put money in, and over a longer period of time, it will accumulate wealth for you because by the time you retire, you can take that money out. You can buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Okay. Okay. These are all things, even CDs. I think savings account that has a very good interest rate that can get you more money, allowing your money to work for you. Okay. So once you get to that point where you have a decent job, you have a good amount of income, even with the little income you have, you can always start anytime. Okay. So that's rule number three. Buy less of less of liabilities and more of your assets. Less liabilities, more of assets. Less liabilities, more of assets. So what happens, a lot of these ones fall into the liability column, okay? And they take money every time you get a paycheck. It's funny, people already spend their paycheck even before they get it. Now, it depends, you know, some people just... They have so much bills that accumulated, but remember, it's all choices. You made the choice to buy those things. The next rule that will get you into financial freedom, okay, is don't spend money you don't have. What's that? ta -da! Credit cards, right? Credit cards are great, right? Everybody wants one. But they are very, 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 very tricky. A credit card is supposed to be used for emergencies, not for you to blow it up on everything you want. Now, here's my rule for credit card. If I want to buy a $20 item, and I don't have the money, you know what I do? I just take it back to the basics. Do I need this or do I want this? Well, if it goes into the needs column, it, that means I need to buy it. Well, check, I buy with my credit card. But with a caveat, I say to myself, I'm gonna have to strive myself from getting ice cream this month, hmm. Or, you know, that cookie I wish to have, or that cu cup of coffee, I'm gonna have to cut a couple of them out this week because I want to pay back my $20 at the end of the month and I don't want to pay interest on my credit card. There's no point, right? So if it falls into the needs column, I spend it and then I pay back right away at the end of the month. If it falls into the wants column, that's a negative. I don't buy. You know what? It can't wait. I'm not going to die if I don't get it. So if I need to pay for my tuition and I need to use my credit card, well, I need education because I'm investing into my own future. Correct? However, if I just want to buy new fancy Air Jordan shoes or you know buy a Nike shirt, well, that can wait. I would rather wait and save. Oh, back to the basic. I would rather save some of my money for maybe six months until I can afford that shirt. Then I'll go out and buy it and nobody can challenge me. So that's rule number four. Don't spend the money you don't have and only use your credit cards for emergencies. Because if you spend more than you have, you will spend the rest of your life working twice, three times as hard to pay back interest on the credit card and then it's not worth it. And if you miss a payment or you miss multiple payments, guess what? It ruins your credit score. It ruins your credit score. And that basically catapults down when you want to buy a big ticket item like a, your house, your car, you know, things that actually matter to you. And then if your credit score is not good, that's the beginning of problems. Okay? So I've given you four basic tips. Now, 
It takes a while for you to develop this habit. It does take a while. You know why? Because all your life, you've never thought about it and nobody has taught you. So I figured my part and my job is to educate you, not just in medical terminologies and medical concepts. I want you to be financially free also. I want to help you start to build your future from now, from now, okay? So let's start with these four basics and you know, I'll make another video later on teaching you even more advanced concepts. But if you master these four basics, you will be good. I would recommend that you read some books that I recommend, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Very, very great book for financial freedom, okay? If you read some motivational books by Brian Tracy, The Power of Self-Discipline. Also, I would get, we want to get books like Zig Ziglar, See You at the Top, At the Top, and also start with these three books, okay? And also the last book that I would definitely recommend is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kawasaki. Get this book or their audio tapes and your life will change. You will start to understand the concepts that are not taught in schools. It's not even taught in medical institution, graduate school, master's program, nursing school. It's not taught, it, you know, it's not taught in places you would expect it. Even when you go to finance in college, it takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to master this concept. Okay? So, I highly recommend these four concepts. Remember again, let's review again. The first one is know your needs and wants. Know what the difference is between your needs and wants. Number two, know the difference between liability and asset. Number three, save 10% of what you earn. And number four, don't spend money you don't have. It's Dr. Adesha again from ftplectures.com. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was uh, really helps you understand the concept of financial management. And I want you to subscribe to this button at uh, the top of our, to our YouTube lectures, uh, our YouTube website, uh, www.ftplectures.com, or you can go to youtube.com/ftplectures. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.